Saving time with Oracle Clips. Let's jump into another bite-sized video clip about Podman. In this clip, we will look at using Podman to create and manage pods, which group multiple containers and allow them to communicate within the same namespace. Let's create a pod in which we can put some containers. We use the command podman pod create and use the option dash dash name to give it the name mypod1. To see details of the pod, we use the command podman pod list. We see the unique pod ID assigned, the name we gave it, and an infra ID and the number of containers associated with the pod. We can also use the command podman pod ps to see the same information. Now let's list all containers with the command podman ps and use the dash a to see all containers and p to see any that are associated with pods. Instead of p, we could also use a separate option dash dash pod with the command. Every pod gets what's called a default infra container. We can see it with the image name podman dash pause. This is a type of management container for controlling the pod and any attributes you would assign to a container are assigned to this infra container. With the command podman run, we run a new container with the Oracle Linux 8 image and associated with the pod by adding the option dash dash pod and the pod name. Let's add a second container running an Oracle database image to the pod. Looking at the pod list, we see the pod now has three containers. And looking at the containers list, we see the three containers, including the infra container and the pod IDs and names they are assigned. We can also create a pod when running a new container by adding the option dash dash pod and with the prefix new colon and the name of the new pod. And as before, we associate a new container to an existing pod by using the dash dash pod option and giving the name of the existing pod. We now see two pods, each with three containers. And we can see all six containers. Remember, each pod gets its own infra container. We stop a pod and all its containers with the command podman pod stop and the name of the pod. The exited status shows it's stopped. And listing all containers, we see all three containers in the pod are also stopped. And similarly, to start the pod, we use the command podman pod start. As long as all the containers in the pod are stopped, we remove the pod with the command podman pod rm. Any running or paused will prevent the remove with an error warning. We see the pod is now gone and the containers are also removed. So that's a quick look at some of the podman options for creating and managing pods. There are many more options for this command that are worth taking the time to investigate. You can see more clips here, and don't forget to subscribe to always get the latest.